طريقتنا الصحة والخير في الجمعية ما لا سيد الصوم يا سيد الشعب ما فائز درسان سيد الشعب محمد عزم عن فقان سيد الشعب محمد عزم ربان إجاء الله علمنا بعون الله وكونوا عونا لنا بالله عصى نهر بفضل الله الحمد لله 1442 Another year, another opportunity Inshallah For all of us this, the Hijri year, the story behind the Hijri year is that during the time of Sayyidina Umar, he wrote a, a letter to Sayyidina Abu Musa Dash'ari radiallahu anhuma. That letter asking him, he was one of the walis on, on the city, one of the areas he's in. And Sayyidina Umar wrote for him the date he put Sha'ban. And so Sayyidina Abu Musa Ash'ari wrote back to Sayyidina Umar, he says, Sha'ban, which year? What if it gets lost or something? So brought this to the attention of Sayyidina Umar, radiallahu anhu arda. Sayyidina Umar then brought the council together of the Sahaba, Sayyidina Uthman, Sayyidina Ali. And he asked them, we need to have an Islamic year, a Hijri year. When should we start it? Some say, start it in Ramadan. Some stay from the Bi'tha, from the time of the Bi'tha of Prophet Sallallahu when he received the revelation. Some said uh, the birth of Prophet Sallallahu And the opinion they agreed on was that it should be the Hijrah. Because that's, it's al fariqa Because that's when the Muslims went from being oppressed, having no physical power, Islam at that time, they were living in fear. If you didn't have to support you, you were oppressed. And their properties was being seized, all kinds of difficulties. But the Hijra marks the change, <coughs> that ascension. So the reality of the Hijra is that, subhanAllah, all the people that asked <coughs> The people that, that worked hard driving Prophet and Muslim, Muslims out, they themselves were driven out of dunya by the Battle of Badr. It is said when Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, when they had the council, and people say that the Hijra, the Hijra actually, the Muharram Hijra is not when Prophet made Hijra. The Hijra started in this month, the permission for Hijra, so the Sahaba started, little groups, families, groups, go, go by together, they started in Muharram. But Prophet's Hijra actually is in Rabi'ul Awwal. By the time he made Hijra, it was Rabi'ul Awwal. When the permission for, for uh, Hijra came and the companions started asking permission and leaving little by little, until not many were left and Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq he would come every now and then and ask Prophet وسلم, for permission and Prophet وسلم, would say to him stay, maybe Allah will send you a companion <laughs> and Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq in his heart he was saying I, I, hope to be, I hope you to be my companion but he wouldn't say they had so much adab and reverence for Prophet. They, 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 in fear of saying something that may scratch the adab for Prophet وسلم, they would keep quiet. They would keep still. So he didn't say anything. Until the permission came for Prophet وسلم, to leave. In the meantime, the Kuffar of Quraysh were growing more uneasy and anxious because now he has a city behind him. Now he has tribes. Aus al-Khazraj. Most of them have become Muslim by then. <coughs> so how are they going to handle uh, Prophet if if he if he leaves and 
all the his all the Muslims or the, most of them those who could they have already left so they had in the in uh, Darun Nedwa in their sit in what the, the clubhouse whatever you call it now in uh, where Majlis. they huh Majlis. Majlis gathering where they discuss important matters or they just sit and Iblis himself attended that one as a Najdi Shaykh <laughs> so uh, he came that's what it's not from it's true <laughs> but he said for them for the unbelievers he came as an old man with Hayba with like a, he had some sort of appearance that impressed them because also they're made from the same uh, they're going to the same place also for the most part so he came and they asked him who you are he says i am a sheikh interested in what you're interested in i know you are gathering because of uh, this one amongst you i'm coming here to help you assist you and they saw him like that they were impressed with his appearance they said and you know shaitan is uh, probably knows how to dress for for success <laughs> <laughs> so so he came they put him Abu Jahl took him and put him in the southern of the majlis not anywhere in the main and they said they, 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 they sat down they said what should we do with him should we jail him should we put him in prison they said no because then people of Medina his followers may come and declare war on you try to get him out say what should we do should we send him out Manfa exile him he said what's the point of exiling him you know how sweet his tongue is you exile him, whatever you exile him is going to have big following mm -hmm. no and this is uh, Iblis was the one who's was the one who's saying no that's not the right that's not the opinion that's right <coughs> and everybody was agreeing with him <coughs> then finally they said what should we do with him Abu Jahl Abu Jahl always wins the the worst uh, and he caused so much so much problems for them and this is this is the problem of the companionship of soup one person caused so many of his companions to go to hell many of his companions Abu Jahl wanted to make peace with Prophet Al Walid uh, ibn al-Murira the one when they reached better he said put it in my beard means blame it on me let us go back and let him if he appeared then he's from you you support him if it, and before Abu Jahl said no no you are a coward that's why you don't want pushed him to go back and fight and die and go to hell so many instances Abu Jahl did this in this instance he said Abu Jahl said why don't we pick one strong man from each tribe and we go to his house and we hit him with one as if one man so his blood is spread amongst the tribes and then there's they can't take retribution there's uh, they're gonna go against all the tribes they cannot and so Iblis, Iblis alayhi ma yastahir what I used to say <laughs> He said, that's the opinion. That's the one. This is what you should do. And they all gathered. One man from each tribe was in front in front of him, in front of the house of Prophet. ﷺ. Prophet ﷺ, at that time he had the permission. He told Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq to prepare. He had the camels ready. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he had the, the guide ready. And he told Sayyidina Ali, put my green jukba and sleep nothing behind he said don't worry he walked outside reciting Asim al-Qur'an al-Hakim inna kalam al-Mursayin ala salatu mustaqim tanzil al-Azizir rahim mitunzil al-Qawm wa'unzil al-Abam fa'um ghafilun laqad haqqa al-Qawli ala akhtarihim fa'innahum la yu'minun inna ja'alna fi a'naqihim aghlala fahiyya ila al-Afqani fa'um mukmahun wa ja'alna min bayni aydihim saddan wa min khalfihim saddan fa'akshaynahum fa'um la yubsirun he took took some uh, dirt <laughs> and he threw it at them and it might take not hours days 
to uh, to go over all the amazing signs that that were shown and the magnificent events that happened uh, on that journey the prophet وسلم, they say when they were hiding in Ghar Thawr the instantly kun a tree grew uh, what, what is it pigeons started a family instantaneously and the Ankabut spider was weaving webs that look like it's 10 years old not just any web very thick webs instantaneously and they came many times they would go and come back because because they had very good trackers back then and they knew they came here where are they it's impossible they're not inside and they're sitting right in front of uh, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq said if they if one of them looks down at his feet they will see us Prophet says Inna Allah la Inna Allah don't worry he says what, what, what is your opinion of two whose the third is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with them so people say that he went to hide there but that cave from what, what we heard from our teachers that story why would he hide when he walked outside of his house and 70 waiting in front of him and he walked amongst them to go hide in a cave does it make sense and how would he hide when he was caught up with the suraqa when they put a hundred camels to kill, to bring Prophet ﷺ dead or alive. And Sayyidina Suraqa followed him. Sayyidina, Sayyidina Suraqa was very brave and a good tracker and he knew how to catch up with them and he caught up with them. And every time Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq said, there's somebody behind us. And Prophet ﷺ says, Hasbi Allah wa na'ma al-wakeel. That I delegate my affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they said that when he came close, the horse sank in the ground to his belly. When he got close. Then he asked Prophet ﷺ, Aman, gave Aman three times. The third time he said, That's it. This is a prophet. <laughs> so he came and he asked, he asked Prophet ﷺ, uh, he he became Muslim and he asked him how he can serve him. And Prophet ﷺ said, Tell whoever you see to not follow us. And he, this is amazing. A human being on the run, as they say, in the desert, telling a Bedouin who just became Muslim, O Suraqa, what do you think that one day you will wear the bracelets of Kisra? Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu was running from anyone? No. They couldn't, يعني, Allah, they couldn't approach him. They couldn't come close to him. Uh, or harming him. So this story of Hijra, Alhamdulillah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala granted us the honor of Islam. Now there is no Hijra. The only Hijra now is, is to leave badness, to leave sin, to leave everything that is displeasing to Allah, that's the, that's the hijrah today, that's the challenge. So we can make hijrah, hijrah from ma'asiyah uh, to ta'ah, hijrah from uh, from rebelliousness to submission to Islam, that is still open until Judgment Day. But that hijrah, that rank of hijrah is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khtassahum bi rahmati. A group of people Allah says about them in the Holy Quran, which we read in uh, Maghrib prayer, the fuqara in muhajirin, the poor ones from muhajirin, yabtabuna fadlan min Allahi wa ridwana, 
that أخرجوا من ديارهم وأموالهم. They they يعني sacrificed everything. They were kicked out of their homes. Their their wealth were seized. Sometimes they couldn't even take their own families with them. They left everything for Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Muhajirin. For what? Allah is Allah سبحانه وتعالى is is giving them the certification. Why they leave? يبتغون فضل من الله ورضوانا. Seeking Allah's pleasure. Seeking Allah's favor. وَيَنْصُرُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ And they support they, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ What more certification? What more certification anyone needs now? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying about those muhajireen, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ Verily, they are the sadiqs. They are the truthful ones. And now people come 1400 years later and they delve into their a'rab, into their status, into this. 1400 years. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That's the first rank. What's the second rank? The second rank is Al-Ansar. Ansar. Those who were first staying in Medina, who resided in the Dar in Medina before them, and whose hearts were residing in Iman. Well, Iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Yani their hearts were entrenched in Iman. <laughs> they don't, anything that is good for, granted for the muhajirin, they love the muhajirin. And they wish them every good over themselves. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا And if they can help the muhajir with a need he has, even though they have the same need, they would put the muhajir first. That is the second rank of believers certified by Allah. And the third rank is what? وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ صَدَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ إِنَّكَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ That's the third type. Muhajireen, Ansar, and until Judgment Day, those who follow in their footsteps come after them, what do they do? رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا They pray for other Muslims. They pray for those who come. Our brothers that came before us. Don't leave in our hearts any ill feeling. Don't leave in our hearts any negativity towards our brothers. That's the third type. And that's the only one available for us. To be a person whose sarira, whose heart is clean, at ease, at peace. The heart is, uh, doesn't have any soul of one, doesn't have any hatred or enmity towards anybody. That is the third. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us Amen. from those people. Amen. Grant us to be, grant us that this year, Ya Rabbi, to... Inshallah, by the day of Ashura, Ashura is a day of victory. According to uh, Sheikh Adnan's book, which I'm guessing he's get, got from Mawlana Sheikh Nazim and Mawlana Sheikh Abdullah, that on this day, Sayyidina Adam uh, was created. On this day, Sayyidina Nuh's ship landed. On this day, Sayyidina Musa was given victory with the sea. On this day, Sayyidina Isa was born. On this, that's Christmas. <laughs> on 10th of Muharram. On this day, many things. Many victories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported the believers. Now some will say, what about the difficult things that happened? Like Sayyidina Hussein. Yes. That is victory for Sayyidina Hussein. Sayyidina Hussein with all his family. Can you imagine what kind of reception they had in the heavens? 
what kind of welcoming to be standing for haq against all odds against armies with your own family knowing the the sacrifice that that will and to give that willingly what kind of akhirah he has seen what kind of uh, meeting with his grandfather So for Sayyidina Hussein, we're sad that the Muslims would do something like that. Yes, you feel sad. You feel sad that innocent people are like, especially from the progeny of Prophet Sallallahu had to suffer like that. But don't feel sad that for the rank that Allah granted Sayyidina Hussein, for the, for the ata, for the favors, because of this, because of this affliction and difficulty. Sayyidina Uthman, he was granted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was sitting at the well and the companions were coming in one by one, first Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu wa arda, he said to the hajib, to the one standing at the door, tell him, welcome him and say, promise, and give him the glad tiding of heaven, that he will enter heaven. Then Sayyidina Umar came, said also give him the glad tiding of heaven, let him in give. And Sayyidina Uthman came. He said, give him the glad time of heaven. Ala musibatin tusibu. He said, give him the glad tiding after a grand affliction will fall before him. So, why are you beating? All the habayit, they say there's 27, 27 million ahl al bayt. The Ba'alawis, for example, from Hadramaut. How they celebrate, how they, they honor the memory of Sayyidina Hussein. That's a proper way of honoring him. With understanding. This is Qadaullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. Decree for what? He wanted to show the magnificence of the family of Prophet and their steadfastness on Haq. From the tarbiyah of their Prophet <laughs> and he wanted to grant them so much so much reward through this. The others who did this, Alhamdulillah, we weren't living at that time to make choices. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't, didn't test us with these things. We, we have, but as for Sayyidina Hussein, and you will hear now so many things, and but we as Muslims have to do it according to the Sunnah of Prophet. According to how it should be done properly with manners, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to be with them. Amen. Grant us to be with Sayyidina Hussein. With Sayyidina Hassan was martyred. Sayyidina Hamza was martyred. Sayyidina Ali was martyred. Who wasn't martyred? They are people of Haq. Sayyidina Omar was martyred. They say even Sayyidina Omar Siddiq was poisoned. Sayyidina Uthman was martyred. And you look at the affliction that following the haq, following the truth, how, how they were mountains in carrying the affliction. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we, we pray for them, Allah raised them higher and higher. Because we want to be from those who came after them, praying for the ones who preceded them. We want to be from those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write us from, from that group. Pray for all of them, Ya Rabbi. Inshallah. May Allah grant us to be with them dunya and ukhra. May Allah ta'ala be with Hurmat al-Habib, Hurmat al-Fatiha.